We're going to be jumping onto the configuration of the routing devices very shortly, but there is one section in the documentation that says verify IP parameters for client operating systems. And the client operating systems that we have access to are Windows and Linux. So let's have a look at our lab and this will be our lab. We've got two endpoints, Bob and Lucy, and we have two Linux servers. We have a web server and a file server, and they are connected to our rooted device. So we're going to configure our endpoints and our server's IP addresses before we move on to the IP version 4 address of our router. So I do have these devices currently open. So I have two Windows devices here and two Linux devices. Let's jump onto our first Windows device and they're going to be using the subnet of 192.168.10.0 which is the first subnet of our range. So you remember that we had 192.168.10.0 slash 24 and we divided that up first we divide it into two parts which would give us a 2 slash 25 and then we subdivided those 2 slash 25 further giving us four subnets on slash 26 so our first subnet will be 192.168.10.0 on a slash 26 if you are enjoying the free content please make sure to like and subscribe 87% of viewers are not subscribed and just a single for you, but it makes a huge difference to our channel. Now, back to the video. So I will do the configuration on this Windows device first. And if you wanted to do it through the GUI, we would go to our network box here, open that up, open network and sharing, go to change adapter settings. And it will be this one here, this local area connection, go into properties, you might have to right click that to go into properties, go into internet protocol version four. We will look at IP version six a bit later on, but for now we're going to do IP version four. Open this up, double click that, and take it off, obtain an IP address automatically, which is for your DHCP configuration. Again, that's something we will look at later on in this course. And we're going to put in the address manually. Now our router will have the IP address of 192.168.10.1. That will be the default gateway. So we will give this one an IP address of 192.168.10.2. It will be on a slash 26. So the last octet will be 192. And our gateway will be 192.168.10.1 dot ten dot one that should be it so let's click ok and then ok again now to verify that we could jump onto this command prompt here and we type ip config and we can see that we have an ip address of 192.168.10.2 now if i jump onto the second windows box we could also configure that. Okay, this is actually the first Windows box. So we configured the second one. So we could also configure that directly from the command prompt. Now to do that, we could use net show command. So net show interface IP version for show config, which will do the same kind of command what we've got here. And the moment we've got a 169 address with a slash 16, which is not what we want. So we will configure this with the IP address of dot three in the last octet. And to do that, we say net show interface IP version four set address name. Now we can see that this address has the name, this um, interface has the name of local area connection, which is here. So that's what we're going to put in. So the name equals local area connection, close the speech marks, and then we, it's a static address that we're putting in manually. And the IP address is 192.168.10.3 with a subnet of 255.255.255.192, and it has a gateway of 192.168.10.3. Dot one. That should be all. Now, if I up our twice, net show interface 
IP version 4 config. We can see that we have given this an IP address of 192.168.10.3 and it has a subnet, subnet mask of a slash 26 which is 255.255.255.192 and a default gateway of 192.168.10.1. Now, theoretically, we should actually be able to ping 192.168.10.2, which is the one on the other side, which we can. Excellent. Okay, so that's it for the Windows servers. Let's jump onto our Linux boxes and do the same there. Again, we can configure the Linux boxes from the GUI. So to do that, let's go over here to our little network icon. We'll go over to wired connecting. We go to wired settings. Now we go to our connection on, let's click here. This little box, go over to IP version four. And we're going to say a manual configuration. And we're gonna give it an address of 192.168.10.4 It's going to have a net mask of 255.255.255.192 and it's going to have a gateway of 192.168.10.1 and that should be it. If we now apply this, we should be able to do a verification if we jump onto a terminal box. So let's open up terminal. If I say sudo s, which will give me root access, put the password in. Now, if I say IP address, we should be able to see that for ENS3, the interface of ENS3, we have an IP address of 192.168.10.4 and the broadcast address, because it's a slash 26, is 192.168.10.63. Now we should also be able to ping dot two and dot three. They are on the same subnet. So ping 192.168.10.2, which we can, and dot three, which we can. That's brilliant. And the last one that I'm going to show is if you wanted to do that same configuration, but on the CLI, so without doing it through a GUI. And there's two ways to do that. You could use NMCLI or IP address. Now I use IP address command, but um, a lot of people say that the real, real Linux gurus should be using N NMCLI. So we need to open up a terminal. Again, give ourselves root access. Add the password. Let's check it. So I just say IPA. Currently, interface ENS3 doesn't have any IP addresses assigned. So let's change that now. The first way I would do it is IP address add 192.168.10.5 on a slash 26 for the device of ENS3. And let's add the gateway IP root add default and it's going to go via 192.168.10.1 for this interface. Let's say IPA. Yeah, we can see that that IP address has been added. Again, let's do a verification with a ping. Ping 192.168.10.2, which it is, and 10.4 which is reachable, just test reachability, yes. All right, so that's it for our client operating systems. In the next part, I'll be configuring the actual device. We've configured Bob and Lucy's endpoint Windows PCs, and we've also configured our two servers to be on the 192.168.10.0 slash 26 subnet. So all we have to do now is configure our default gateway. So this is our topology and let's just open up our Huawei switch. I'm using a NE40. So the first thing that we need to do, we do system view to get into the config mode. And then we can change the host name. So sysname, we're going to say RCNE40. 
40, which just stands for Ruta Coach, and it's a Huawei ne 40. Now you see this star at the beginning means that the configuration has changed, but without doing a commit, nothing has um, been pushed to the actual box yet. So let's do the interface configuration as well. So it's for interface, ethernet, one slash zero slash one. Our IP address will be 192.168.10.1 on a slash 26. And we're going to do a no shutdown. Now on Huawei, we, do, we say undo shutdown. And then we commit to that configuration. Now you see that the name has now changed to RCNE40 and we're on the configuration mode for Ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 1. Now to have a look at that actual IP address, I'm going to say display IP interface brief, but I'm going to exclude because by default it has some layer 3 VPN information and also I don't want to see the unassigned addresses. So if I do a pipe and I say exclude unassigned and also an additional pipe which I'll say exclude 4094 then we can see that we have for ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 1 an IP address of 192.168.10.1 slash 26 and this is just a loopback address for our layer 3 VPN work which we can ignore for now so in theory we should be able to ping 192.168.10.2.3.4 and .5 Let's do that from here, 192.168.10.2, which we can, dot three, oh, not dot 23, dot three, dot four. And it's a bit weird on the Huawei when you're using putty. I can't just press a backspace. I have to press the back arrow and then press backspace to, go to delete the previous character. And the last one is, dot five and dot five may not work because I might not have configured the IP address correctly. Let's have a quick look at that. In my mind, I'm thinking there's always one, but let's do a sudo minus S and IPA. ENS3 doesn't have the IP address. So let's just add that IP address now. IP address add 192.168.10.5 slash 26 and the device is ENS3, and then IP root add, is it default? Add 192.168.10.1, what is it? IP root, IP root add default via 192.168.10.1 for the device of ENS3. All right, let's say IPA. It's added that. Now let's try that ping again from our Huawei box. Yeah, that's it for our default IP version 4 addressing. I'll see you in the next video. Now, it's question time. One, how can you check the IP address configuration of a Windows OS device using the command line? A, if config. B, IP config. C, show IP address. D, NS lookup. The answer is B. 2. Which IP parameter is responsible for ensuring that packets are routed to the correct network segment? A. Subnet mask. B. Default gateway. C. DNS server address. D. IP address. The answer is A. 3. Which IP parameter determines the size of the network to which the client OS belongs? A. MAC address. B. Subnet mask. C. IP address. D. Default gateway. The answer is B. 4. How can you determine if a client OS is obtaining its IP parameters dynamically through DHCP? A. Check the IP address to see if it is within the private IP range. B. Use the ifconfig command and look for the DHCP server address. C. Look for a default gateway in the IP configuration. D. Examine the IP configuration to see if it has a static IP address assigned.
The answer is D. 5. What command can you use in Linux to display the IP address? Configuration of a client OS. Choose 2. A. If config. B. IP config. C. Show IP address. D. Netstat. E. IP address. The answer is A and E. 6. Look at the exhibit. Why is the first connection from a ping often unsuccessful? A. The destination device is busy processing other network traffic. B. The TTL, time to live, value of the ping packet is set to zero. C. The ARP, address resolution protocol, cache on the source device is empty. D. The ICMP, internet control message protocol, echo request packet is blocked by a firewall. The answer is C. 7. What IP parameter needs to be configured to allow a client to communicate with other clients on different networks? A. Default gateway. B. Subnet mask. C. DNS server address. D. MAC address. The answer is A. 